Amen. Good morning, Christ Community Church. It's so good to see you guys. We had a wonderful service, first service. We had a wonderful 11 o'clock service last week. And I've got so much stuff to share with you. i got just a few minutes to jump in here and do it. And I'm just glad you're here. But before we do, i got to take just a, I have to uh, take a little a diverse path trail before we jump into it. Is uh, I just want you to know that the University of Kentucky has a football team. I just want you to know that. I don't know if you recognize that. It had been 20 years since they played in a New Year's Bowl game. And, I, and people say, who were you for? Well, I couldn't lose because I'm a graduate from the University of Kentucky. But honestly, I was pulling for Penn State. But I will have to admit, I wore my Kentucky T-shirt this week. So just to let you know, God loves winners. He just loves winners, I'm going to say. <laughs> then uh, people are all get all upset. But let me transition, get you out of the natural. <laughs> when I look at the cross... Jesus is our champion. He's won every battle. He's beat every demon. He's conquered every sin. His blood has set every person free all over the planet Earth from every language, tribe, and nation. Jesus is our champion. He's our winner. So even though I can talk sports and joke about things, is that Jesus is the reason we're here. And uh, while I'm thinking about it, is Corinne did a wonderful job on our one-word cards, and I hope that you'll participate. If you're with us live streaming, you can also participate with us as we just believe God that he'll just speak to you, share with you, download for you this coming year, something that he wants to work on you about. Also, while I'm thinking about it, 21 days of prayer and fasting, you are free as a priest unto the Lord to hear how God wants you to uh, fulfill those things. I can just tell you, having done it numerous times, 21 days is 21 days. You can't speed it up. I can't repetition, get through it quick. It is what it is, a second, a minute, an hour, half a day, a day, day one. <laughs> and then you start all over again. So I'm here just to encourage you, pick up the literature at the connection table desk out there and just be a part of what we're doing and study it and look at it and consecrate yourself because I'm telling you, this is an incredible opportunity when you're praying and fasting with other believers. God does some amazing things. You can pray and fast on your own. But as a corporate group, as we're coming together, saying Jesus for 2019, we're taking the first part of the year and we're just seeking you. And as Pastor Dina said, it doesn't have to be food, it can be other things. My wife accused me of trying to find a weight program that I could, uh, you know, diet or something. But I will say this is that fasting kind of messed up my metabolism and went on a 40-day fast one time. And my body weight just shot up when I came off the fast and I've never lost it since, so that's my excuse, and I'm staying with it. Okay. <laughs> Having said that, just to just encourage you to do that. So this morning, we're talking about beyond all expectations, and we're talking about the things that God has in store for you. And so let me just pause with a story. I was talking to a friend the other day, and he was telling me about his family member that uh, was not interested in church, and it really concerned him, and he was really distraught over that. And so I began to ask some questions, like about his family member. I said, well, our are they doing well health-wise? He goes, oh, yeah, they're healthy. I said, well, financially, how are they doing? Oh, yeah, they both have jobs. They live in a very exclusive neighborhood here in town. They're just doing extremely well. I said, well, there's your answer. There's really not a, a big need for God in their life. They have health, and they've got wealth. They don't need God. And church, my appeal to you is that there is more to life than just being healthy and wealthy. There is so much more that Jesus has to pour into you. Those are just nominal things that as a good God who created the heavens and the earth, that it says he sends the rain to shine, speaking of rain, he sends the rain to come upon the just and the unjust, that he takes care of every living thing, that there's just his nature of God, his benevolent nature, his kindness, his goodness, as he extends to us. But when it comes to Jesus... This is where it just the road really narrows. And last Sunday, we heard our youth, our former youth pastor, Jim Bucci, just talk about surrender. And we're going to do a kind of like a tag on to what he shared last Sunday because it's really all about Jesus. It's not about church. It's not about religion. It's not about going through all the right exercises. It's about a person named Jesus Christ. And you either accept him or reject him. You either allow him to be in your life as Lord and Savior. You can't put him as a a side ornament in your life. You know, a lot of people say, well, you know, Jesus said we're to be the salt of the earth, and that is true. But let me go a step further. 
salt is something you add to your food to bring flavor. Now, a lot of you have this scowl on your face about salt. Salt's good. It's okay. It's okay to have a little salt. But Jesus doesn't want to be just the salt in your life, to add a little flavor to your life. He is the salt. He is the source. He is the life. He is the strength. He is the reason. He is the meal. He is the whole deal. It's everything is about Jesus. So when you think about Jesus, it's not just letting him just be a little salt in my life, kind of add some flavor to it. It's no, everything I do. So when you go through your life and you realize every aspect of my life, my relationships, I look at my work life, I look at my social life, I look at every aspect of my life, I have to surrender to the Lordship of Jesus Christ. So everything I'm journeying on is about him. And so what we want to do this morning is tell you that when you're in this journey of faith and walking with Christ, God does some amazing things. He uses ordinary people like you and I to do extraordinary things for him. And that's what I'm just so, just so pumped up about because when you get into some of these things we're going to share with you, I hope it just inspires you to see 2019 to be your breakthrough, to see 2019 to be your best year yet. Thank you for four of you that said yes. I believe, I believe it for 2019 to be your best year. I believe you're going to see God do some amazing things through you. That God's going to use you in ways that you never even dreamed possible. That you're going to experience the grace of God and the glory of God and the presence of God like you've never imagined before. So starting off in our scriptures, we, we, as I say, as I go through these messages and preparing things, the hardest part for me is paring down the number of scriptures that I want to share because I have just a few minutes and then we just can't get through and everybody goes about their business. And it's like, God, there are just so many incredibly powerful verses that you have in this Bible. And I have just a few minutes to try to share with you what I feel like is what the Holy Spirit's directing us for this moment in time. And this morning, the Lord just spoke to us and just this whole week about just beyond all expectations. And so I just want to share this with you. So if you have your Bibles in Matthew 19, 26, Jesus was speaking to his disciples Goes, he made a statement about how hard it was for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. And the disciples looked at Jesus and they said, well, then who can be saved? And Jesus said, it's easier for a camel to go, to go through the eye of a needle than it is for a rich man to enter into heaven. Which is, I think, a fair warning to all of us. And so the disciples said, well, Jesus, I mean, they got totally despondent over it. Who then can be saved? And listen to how Jesus responds to this. Jesus said, with man, this is impossible but with God, all things are possible. And we as a church like to emphasize this last thing. But with God, all things are possible. You say that with me this morning. But with God, all things are possible. That was fair. Let's say it again. But with God, all things are possible. One more time. But with God, all things are possible. And so when you think about this, with God, all things are possible. We say that, great. But the first part of the verse says, with man, this is impossible. And this is what I'm appealing to you about, your spiritual life. That's the realm that doesn't have limitations. I'm limited by my natural body. I'm limited by my natural health. I'm limited by my natural abilities and intellect and physique and uh, need rest and food and air and all this kind of stuff. I mean, we're just very limited. But in the realm of the spirit, it's unlimited. When you're putting Jesus as first and foremost in your life, your life becomes unlimited. That was good, Pastor. Thanks. I'm just telling you, there's just, there's just some incredible things that happen when you tap into the Holy Spirit and begin to let the Holy Spirit, because he can set you free from stuff. There are things that have been debilitating, controlling things in your life that Jesus wants to set you free from. There are, there are relationships that God wants to bring healing to. There are times where the Lord wants to blow up on you and just, and just set you free from that heaviness and depression or anger or fear or worry. There are times where God the Holy Spirit just wants to set your mind free to be able just to enjoy life. Jesus came for us to enjoy life. That's life now, here, this side of heaven. And that's his whole purpose. That's the reason why Jesus came, was so that you and I could have life. Amen. But we have to keep him first and foremost. And that's the challenge this morning, is keeping our, our, our personal life first, our spiritual life first and foremost. Let me go to another dimension. Did you know that when you have Jesus as Lord of your life, he can walk with you into the marketplace and he can give you creative ideas in your marketplace? 
He can give you, he can give you the, the, I'll use old King James, and he says he can give you the ability to have witty inventions, that you can figure out how to put things together. I knew a guy one time that was an endodontist, another guy that was a, a ear, nose, and throat specialist, and God gave them insights where they had a breakthrough on how your upper part of your mouth and your nose and your sinuses were all connected, and they had this surgery never been done before, and they were able to do it and put it in the American Dental and American Medical Association journals for the breakthrough they had in this type of surgery. Two believers that love Jesus. Well, God loves to use his people in creative ways. Can I get an amen this morning? I mean, to me, this is good news. God will give you the ability because you can tap in because the realm of the spirit is unlimited. And so what we're trying to say is our first takeaway. You have your notes with you or have your card with you this morning is our natural expectations are limited. When we talk about, when we look at our own natural abilities, we can get really depressed. And we look out at the world, we get distressed. But when we look at him, we're at rest. Don't you like a little poetry? See, God does, God just does some amazing things when you're in him. He just continues, he just continues to build. He continues to just encourage you in your spiritual walk. So we get into this. So I just want to stretch your faith a little bit. We've edited this video because of the content. We are live streaming. This is going all over the world. We have people all over the world that are watching this at various times throughout the week. And so we had to edit it. But our friend Christopher Alam went to a country in Asia, saw God do some amazing things. And let me just, just set up the, the tape because I he called me on the phone the other day. He said, Brother Mitch, I'm always Brother Mitch. Brother Mitch, you won't believe what God did. And he starts going through this. And finally he said, would you please just send me a tape? I said, because I can't convey to the church all the things that you saw and heard and what you did. So he went to this country, and he went to this region in this country, an Asian country, where that, I'll tell you, 99% of the people were unchurched, unsaved. They weren't Christian. He said it was 250 yards wide with people and went back 350 yards. He said there was a road at the very back of the crowd. He said there was even people on the other side of the road that had come to see and hear the wonderful working of Jesus. And the reason we share this with you is because you had a part in helping him go do this crusade. So here's Christopher Alum.
One of the things that we didn't put in this part of the video that he shared is that in the region that he was in, there was insurgency against the government forces. So on the platform, he had a guy who was the ambassador for the area to the government was there with them. But he also said he had these insurgent guerrillas, rebel guys that came, brought his paralyzed mother, and Jesus healed her completely and totally. She's able to walk again. Then he talked about people in the government forces brought in their relatives, like some of these other family members, and Jesus healed them. So if Jesus is above politics, how about that? Healed on both sides. Yeah, let's give the Lord a big hand for that. Honestly, the Lord does amazing things. So I want to share this verse with you. This is my daily devotion. I came across it, and I wanted to share it with you. When we talk about our natural expectations are limited, listen to what it says in Acts 9, verses 32 through 35. As Peter traveled about the country, he went to visit the Lord's people who lived in Lydda. There he found a man named Aeneas who was paralyzed and had been bedridden for eight years. Let me pause there. How many know if you've been bedridden for eight years, it seems your condition is pretty hopeless? Eight years, this guy wasn't able to move at all. But it says that when Peter went to him, he calls him by name. Aeneas, Peter said to him, Jesus Christ heals you. Get up and roll up your mat. Immediately, Aeneas got up. All those who lived in Lydda and Sharon saw him and turned to the Lord. Now this is a story about the Apostle Peter traveling around to various churches because persecution was at an all-time low at this moment. The number one terrorist named Saul had been converted who became later the Apostle Paul and there was rest in the churches and so Peter was able to travel about. So as he came to this town he saw this crippled man and he said the Lord Jesus heals you. And it's interesting to me that he didn't touch him, he didn't lay hands on him, he didn't help him up. He said if God's healed you you're to rise. And the guy rose and took up his mat. Now, this next verse we're going to read to you is a different story. It says that there was a man who from birth was born crippled. And the disciples were going to the temple to pray, Peter and John. This is in Acts 3. And as they're going to the temple to pray, they see this lame man. Now, this is very interesting to me is that, you know, Jesus did not heal every sick person he saw. Because this man, it says, had been, was over 40 years of age. So he obviously had sat right there at the gate of the temple begging for alms when Jesus passed by. So you say, well, Jesus, does he play favorites? No, it's just that he walks in the perfect will of the Father. That he knew when to pray for people and when not to pray for people. He knew when to submit to the will of the Father to do things in the supernatural and when it wasn't the timing of the Lord. I'm not there yet. I miss it quite a bit. I still pray for people. So I want to encourage you this morning. I'd rather, if I'm going to miss it, I'd rather miss it by acts of commission, going and praying for people, than not praying. Are you guys following that? I'd rather try to lay hands and pray for people, minister to people, than not. But I'm just pointing out in this story they're about to read. So the early church was going to the temple to pray. Peter and John see this guy. They say, the Lord Jesus heals you. They pick him up by his hand, raising up. It says his ankle bones were immediately strengthened. It says he went walking and leaping and praising God. We used to sing this with our kids when they were little in Sunday school class. You know, walking and leaping and praising God. Can you guys get the vision? Walking and leaping and praising God. Anyway, the guy was running all around. The guy was running all around. It says a crowd gathered. And Peter and John began to preach, and it said 5,000 people. 5,000. Yeah, get that out of your mind. The image of me dancing. Okay, well, just. It said 5,000 people came to the Lord. As a result, intense persecution broke out against the church. The Roman authorities didn't want a crowd to gather like that. The Jewish authorities were jealous because all these people were corrupting Judaism, and they were becoming followers of the way. They were becoming followers of Jesus, the false Messiah, the one who brought this blasphemous idea that God could become a man that Jesus was the fulfillment of the messianic promises. So you had intense persecution, and so the Jewish authorities brought these disciples before them, and they said, do not speak or preach anymore in the name of Jesus. It says they were imprisoned because of this miracle. Then they got out, got released, and it says that the, the people who were the judges who had all gathered to decide the fate of these men recognized that they'd been with Jesus. And they said, just don't do this anymore. We're going to let you go, and so they sent them off. Now, the early church knew what to do, and this is why we recorded this in the Passion Translation. It says it this way. Here's how they responded to the intense persecution not to speak up. 
Because I'm saying to you as a believer and a follower of Jesus Christ, there are times you need to be silent, but there are also times you need to speak up. There are times that you need to declare who Jesus is to you. So it says, so they prayed this prayer. They said, so now, Lord, listen to their threats to harm us. Empower us as your servants to speak the word of God freely and courageously. And that's what we need as a congregation, to speak the word of God freely and courageously. Can I get an amen? Amen. Stretch out your hand. They're praying to the Lord. Stretch out your hand of power through us. You know what it says? Through us to heal and to move in signs and wonders by the name of your holy son, Jesus. At that moment, the earth shook beneath them, causing the building they were in to tremble. Listen to this. Each one of them, each one of them was filled with the Holy Spirit, and they proclaimed the word of God with unrestrained boldness. So when persecution came, the church went into prayer, and out of prayer, God empowered them, if you would, to become super evangelists. They just pressed on. They just stood up. They stood their ground. They loved people. They confronted people. They shared with people they, the joys of serving Jesus and knowing Jesus and the love and the peace and the kindness that he brought in their life replaced all the other stuff they'd known before. And the word of God, it says, spread and multiplied rapidly through the city of Jerusalem. So my hope and prayer is that God would do the same thing in our communities, that the word of God would spread rapidly and people realize that Jesus is not a church building that Jesus is not a religion, that Jesus is a person. And that they would have this relationship with Jesus in such a way that it would ignite their faith, ignite their joy, ignite their passion to realize that Jesus, the Bible says that he's seated at the right hand of the Father. Listen to this. He's seated at the right hand of the Father, and he's making intercession for you and I. Jesus is praying for us by name. He's praying for you. He's praying for me. He knows what you're going through. And so my appeal this morning is I want you to keep your spiritual life first and foremost in your daily walk. That you're conscious of the Holy Spirit, that you're conscious of the presence of God, that you're willing to surrender to his leading, that if he tells you to speak, you speak. He tells you to serve, to serve. He's going to stretch you in ways you haven't been stretched before. For some of you, God may just tell you, come to church more often. That went over big. Yeah, God may just speak to some of you, get involved in a ministry. God may instruct some of you to start new ministries. The Lord may be just inspiring you to do some things that maybe hadn't crossed your mind yet. There's just so many possibilities. There's so many uh, avenues where God can just create just as incredible as you're walking with him and loving him and serving him that will open all these doors for you. And you realize, man, I'm so thankful I put my spiritual life first. It blesses me in my home. It blesses me in my work. It blesses me in my recreational life. It blesses me in my health. It blesses me in every aspect. Why? Because I keep the spiritual things first place in my life as a top priority. Let me just go a step further. You know, there are times when God just fills you with boldness. You just want to pray for people or minister to people. And in the movie series that was back out several years ago called God's Not Dead, this was based on a true story. There was a professor that for years would taunt Christian students. And the way he would taunt them is he would stand in his classroom and he'd hold out a test tube and he'd say, anybody that's a Christian, I want you to stand up. And I want you to pray and ask your God to keep this test tube from breaking when I drop it on the floor of this classroom. Year after year, semester after semester, each and every semester, he would issue this challenge and people just back down. And that's what the movie God's Not Dead is based on because one year a freshman came to campus, had to take the class as a prerequisite, understood the dynamics, and in prayer God spoke to him to stand up and challenge the professor. So they come to class that day, professor gets out, introduces himself, introduces the class, says if you believe in Jesus, you believe in God, you're believing a myth, you're believing something that's a fantasy, and I just want to prove it because I'm going to hold this test tube, and if you believe in God, stand up and you pray that this test tube will not break. True story. So this student stood up. You can imagine the horrified gasp of all the other students, like, what an idiot. The professor said, would you like to pray? He said, no, sir, I've already prayed. But I'll pray again. And he just prayed the simple prayer, God, just help us in this moment. So the professor dropped the test tube. And sure enough, it hit his shoe and rolled off onto the floor and didn't break. The professor was so distraught and discouraged, he ran out of the room, 
The student comes down front, begins to preach Jesus to the class, and several students came to the Lord because of his boldness. And that's where the whole movie series came, God's Not Dead. And my encouragement to you this morning has to do more with allowing God to change you, to allowing God to expand your mind, to allow God to expand the possibilities that God can just use you. Because in the natural, we're limited. But in the spirit, you're supernatural. In the spirit, God does amazing things. In the spirit, like when Christopher Lom is up sharing and teaching and preaching in, in this this, if you would, heathen region of the world. He said there were so many people coming to the platform to give testimony of Jesus. They were 50 yards deep, and they couldn't get all the testimonies in for the people who had been healed and touched by Jesus. And my courage and my encouragement to you is when the Lord just kind of gives you a little nudge and wants you to share a word of kindness or share a word of hope or do an act of service. Or the Lord wants you to speak up. Or the Lord wants you to step out. Or the Lord wants you just to minister to people around you. Be bold. Be courageous. Let God use you in a supernatural way. Let God just stir up the gifts of God that he's placed within you. Let God just begin just to do that amazing work that only he can do. That you see God as he just comes into your life, as he just begins to move and minister, as God just begins to, to touch you in a supernatural way and you begin to step out and he backs you up and all of a sudden you realize, Jesus, you're so amazing. And you just kind of have this expectation, God, I don't know what life would be without you. But with you, it's an adventure. Let 2019 be your adventure. Let it be your season of breakthrough. Let it be that time where you're just saying, God, I'm just pressing in. I'm just going on. I'm just going to find ways to let my spiritual life just dominate my life. I'm going to find ways to let the gifts and callings of God just come to the surface in a greater measure than ever before. And you're just going to have a wonderful season as you go with the Lord. So we've got one last verse we want to share with you. We're going to receive communion this morning. And then we're going to do something else special in just a moment. But the Bible tells us that prayer reveals God's unlimited power. Let me share with you one other quick example. Jim Bucci shared this with me, and I'm surprised he didn't share it with you guys. But when he was, uh, when he's here last Sunday speaking, but when he was speaking in Malaysia at a conference, the, the guys that were putting on the conference, his team came to him and said, Jim, I want you to do some things. I want you to pray this afternoon and get names and dates. Names and dates, and we want you to share it. So Jim doesn't know anybody. There's about 300 people gathered there. So the time of the service came for Jim to share. So he had names and dates. So he got up and he says it was August something and he gave the name of the person. He said, then he threw it out there. This is what the Lord told me. If you have this date and if this is your name, I need you to stand up. He says he called it out and they waited. And they waited. And they waited. And they waited. And he was like, God, I can't get into my other words because I gave this word out first. And finally, he said, way in the back, two girls stood up. And the one girl said, well, you gave out the birth date of my sister, but you called out my name. And Jim said, this is perfect because I've got a word for your family. And he began to prophesy over them the things that God wanted to do in their family. And then he had other names and other dates as he began to share and minister. And all I'm trying to tell you is I've known Jim Bucci for years. For Jim Bucci to get up and share names and dates, that's God. I'm just saying that is God. <laughs> using him in supernatural ways. I'm just telling you guys, that's the Lord, and we're so proud to be partnering with him. And by the way, you guys took up a phenomenal offering for Jim Bucci last night. Let's give the Lord a hand for that. You guys did a wonderful job. It's a great blessing to him. And so I've got one other quick story about Jim Bucci. It's been Jim Bucci Sunday. So on, on New Year's Day, I'm sitting on the couch with my son Davis, watching college football or whatever, and I get this call, and it's Jim. He said, Pastor Matthew, I go, yeah, he goes, can you help me? I said, sure. I said, what do you need? He goes, I went to my friend's uh, mother's funeral. I just want to come and support him. He says, it's going to start in 15 minutes, and they told me I'm doing the funeral. What do I do? I said, here, let's just walk through it. So we walked through what to do and share. And so he went through it, and so he did, he did, he got, got through it. But what impressed me was he told me the week before He'd been with this lady, and she had prayed to receive Christ before she passed. God can use anybody. Let's give the Lord a hand for that. That's just so amazing to me. 
He prays with her, and a week later, she comes to the Lord. So, I mean, she comes to the Lord, and a week later, she passes. All right, this is a great verse, because I believe that this verse should be, if you don't have it memorized, you look up in the Passion Translation, it's just a wonderful verse that God uses to, in, just to encourage you and I. In the Passion Translation, in Ephesians 3.20 says this, Never doubt God's mighty power to work in you and accomplish all this. He will achieve infinitely more than your greatest request, your most unbelievable dream, and exceed your wildest imagination. He will outdo them all, for his miraculous power constantly energizes you. What an incredible promise God makes to every believer. As a follower of Jesus Christ, you can tap into this verse, Ephesians 3.20, to say that God would do infinitely more than I can think, ask, or imagine. What an incredible God we serve.